Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse, and in this wonderful tutorial, I'm trying to see how to use machine learning to be able to predict whether a particular Bible passage belongs to the Old Testament or the New Testament. Right? So that's what we're trying to do in this particular tutorial. So now let's see how to work with it. So we'll be importing our EDA packages to so using Panda to do our EDA stuff. And then we'll also be loading all our ML packages, right? So we're using SKLN in this tutorial. So if you are in a version of SKLN that is before 1.7. At the 17, you will need to import train test split from cross validation, right? But in your in version test, the newer versions you have to go with model selection, otherwise, to be giving errors. Okay, now, let's see how to work with it. So, we load our data set to so DF, it's going to be pd.read underscore csv, then our data set to kgv. So, we have this clean data, right? So, we're going to read our data set. Now, let's do some simple analysis of our data set. So, df.head is going to give us a data set, which is quite interesting. So, we have our ID for the particular page, our books, our chapter, our verse, and our test, right? So, now we'll be trying to see how to use this data set to build and work on our machine learning aspect. So, first of all, let's see if there is any missing values inside. So, df.columns, we're checking for column consistency, they are consistent. The shape of our data set is about 31,000, which is not about 31,000 rows, and then six columns. And then the next thing we need to do is that we want to check if there is any missing value. So it's null dot is dot sum, right? So perfect. I use now that's giving us that there is no missing any right inside our data set. So perfect. So there's no missing any. Nice. So now let's see how to, before we work on it, let's see how to find the longest verse in the Bible. The longest verse in the Bible. To find the longest verse in the Bible, we need to be df.test for our test data set dot string dot length. Right? So with this is going to list all the particular length of each and every verse in the Bible, right? So row one, row two, row three. And then from here we can find the longest verse using the same stuff. So it's going to be df.test.string dot length and we use the dot max to find so dot max maximum could find the maximum value which is 528 different characters so that is the longest base so to find the actual base to locate this particular base you can just use this method of id max right ids max so you can use ids max so if i go with idx right index maximum it's going to give us the particular index this is the particular character and this is going to be the particular index to get the actual location to fit the actual location using tf.log then you pass in our particular test so this is going to give us our particular test perfect so this is the whole role for that which is s at the 8 verse 9 which is actually the longest verse in the kjv right so df.log and then this particular test that we had so let's read our test.txt. Okay, so this is the longest verse in the King James Bible, which is very interesting. Now let's see how to work on our data set, how to build our model. So to build our model, we need to be able to do some interesting stuff, right? So we need to be able to label them because our data set from here, here that head. This was not, we don't have any label. We can use the books as the labels, but that's, that means that you have to train it very well, right? Otherwise, it will give you a lot of errors. But we don't want to use the books what i want to use whether it is old testament or whether it's new testament so we have to, we have to create a label for for the old testament and then for the new testament so let's see how to do that so we're using old testament as zero and then new testament as one right so that is what we're doing now so this goes up so now let's see how to do that so let's first of all label it then we start building up the data so df let's go df1 or let's make df2 df you can use df copy then df2 dot head perfect so so now let's see how to do that so i need to label them so i want to get the last verse of the old testament and then use it as the basis to to build the label for all the old testament so df2 dot lock so the last verse of the old testament is about two last verse two three one four four so perfect. If I check this one, this is Malachi chapter 4 verses, which is the last 
phase of the Old Testament. So everything before this is going to be Old Testament, and everything after this is going to be the New Testament. So it's going to be like this here, and then copy it in this way. So everything is with zero till this value. Then let's create a label for it. So a label. So with this particular stuff, you can get all the values, right? Now let's assign it to zero. That is Old Testament. Perfect. Now with the same format, you can also do it for the New Testament. So this is the same format. So this is going to be for our Old Testament, and this is going to be for our New Testament, right? So NT. To be everything after this particular value, which we have here, five. So everything after this value is going to give us as New Testament. Perfect. So we have been able to work on it in a nice way. If I check it again, df 2head Now we have it right. So we have our label here, which is very interesting. And if I do the same thing for the tail, we have Revelations as one, right? So the, this is old, this is New Testament. This is Old Testament. Now let's build our features. Let's see how to build our features. So I'm just going to call it as S, our S features. Because this we are using our test, right? The individual test as our features, and this is going to be our label. So S features is going to be df2.test. And our Y label is going to be our df2.label. Perfect. So we have them to work on it in a very simple, in a very nice way. So the next thing we need to do, the next thing is to do, you need, you need to vectorize it, you need to do vectorization, right? Vectorization. So the reason we are doing vectorization is that we are supposed to convert to so machine learning. It doesn't understand test, right? The only thing it understands is numbers. So you have to convert all of these tests, all these strings into numbers, into vectors. So that's why you are doing vectorization. So using the count vectorizer, which we imported above from here, we imported count vectorizer from here. So using the count vectorizer, you can also use term frequency inverse division, inverse document frequency to do that also. But using the count vectorizer, which is quite simple, to do our vectorization. So it's going to be this, right? So let's initialize the CV. Then we're going to initialize our vectorizer. Let me put it here. Right, and then so that we're going to build. Vectorize the entire stuff. It's going to be scv dot fit transform. Then we're going to transform our particular value here, which we have as our s features, right? So it's going to convert the entire stuff here into vectors. So we can use these ones for our particular test. Right? Let me make it after s. So that works interesting and nice. So it's going to take some time to work on it now. But it has finished vectorizing. Now, if I go back to check my s. So that is giving us a sparse matrix, right? Which is which consists of number by arrows of int. This is a 64. Perfect. So now let's see how to do that. So we have to we have to be able to create a training data set and then a testing data set. So I've already printed it. I've already let's print this and then this is how it's going to be. So let's come faster. So this x is the one that we converted. The y is from our labels here. There we have. Now we are going to split it on 30, 30, 30, 70. Right, and then random of 42. Perfect. So now we are going to work on it. Perfect. We have, we have our training data set and then our testing data. Right, very interesting. Now let's see how to build our model. So we're using naive base, and the reason we are using naive base is that naive base is very good, it is a, a very powerful algorithm, very, very useful. We are trying to work with test classification or test working with document test is very, very good. It's very, very useful. So let's see how to do that. So I'm just going to initialize my classifier. So CLF is going to be my classifier. Then we need to use multinomial. So let's go with our multinomial here. Then initialize it, right? So after initializing it, we have to fit our data set. Dot fit. Fitting, we are going to join them together. So we are joining our S training data set, which we have here. We had our S and then our Y. Our S and then our Y training data set. Now it has been able to build it perfectly for us. So now let's try and check our score for this particular that we have done. So let's call that our score. So accuracy score. So now it has been able to build our model. So we want to check for the score of this CLM for the classifier. Dot score. Then I can score it on 
this stuff or on the whitest right so let's score it on this cell first then we score it on the other cell so if i score it on it it's going to give us a very high value of 93 which is not that bad and then i can also score it on another one on the training data set not on the testing data set not the training so let's try that one so test which is 91 so which is very good so 91.5 is a very great test right it's a very good model that you have built now let's see how to apply this model to predict the test right so we have this test here we have some test so this is the test that we will be predicting which is in first Corinthians we also have, we also have another test here, which will also be applying on it so from here it is in Corinthians right and everybody knows that Corinthians is in the old the new testament so we're trying to see how to predict this test whether it is old testament or new testament it's going to be let's call it as a sample example so sample example going to be sample best sample best then i'll be using this particular test that we have so I'll copy this one and i'll paste inside the string inside an array it can be you can just do it as a string any any of them is going to work now we have to convert this one right just as we converted these ones we converted it into vectors the same we have to convert this test into vectors otherwise it's not going to understand it that's one thing you have to understand you have to convert this test into vectors right so we're using a convert we, we, we're converting them into test so let's go that's vec vector using the same kind of vectorizer that we have from above then we're going to transform it into vectors so sample this which is this one fit then to array So if I go with this now, it's going to convert it into vectors. So if I check it again here, it's actually going to be given the vectors, right? So this number here, this no more test now. Now it is numbers, right? They are all vectors now. So that is how machine the scaling on machine learning is going to understand it. Now let's try and apply it to CLF dot predict. So we'll be predicting on our vector vector. So it's going to give us our value. But before we predict, we have to realize that. OT, Old Testament is what? Zero. And then New Testament is NT is one, right? So that is something to know. So now let's try it and see. Wow, perfect. Our model works. So this is in the New Testament, then give us as one New Testament. So let's try it on another one, which is this particular test, which is in the Old Testament, so that we know that our model is not biased, right? So let's try it on this. And we work on the same mode stuff that we did here. So this goes up. Use the same stuff we did here, but here is not going to be best. There's two, two, let's go just two. And then we use the same stuff we had here to predict it. Perfect, right? Let's go it to vectors. Now we can predict our second verse. This verse is in Isaiah, which is the Old Testament. So let's see what it's going to give us. Old Testament, wow, it worked perfectly. So that's going to give us a predict variable. So now let's see this model and then use it for the next aspect of building a very powerful app, simple flash app to work on it. Right? So let's save our data set or save our model rather, not our data set. So to save our data set, we need job lib. It's going to be from sklearn.sternhouse. Import. You can use pickle anyway. Job lib. That's perfect. So we're using job lib to, to do our stuff. Then let's see the name of our model as let's call it as viable prediction model it's going to be open we're going to open right we're going to use the normal open let's call it as bible base predictor wow nv live base model <laughs> since too long dot pkl can make it job relief in your name. PKL. Then this is a writable. So writable but perfect. So you have been able to do that now. Let's save it to job lib dot dump. We are dumping our classifier, our model, into our particular stuff here that we have with this particular open test here. Perfect. Now it has been saved. 
So if I check back here to be there, right? So now let's see. Let's close it. Close it. So Bible dot close. Okay. So thank you for watching this long tutorial. In case you have any question or contribution, you can just put it in the comment section so that everybody can benefit. And please don't forget to subscribe and then check the links below for more interesting stuff. In case you need any help in any aspects, you can also let me know. Thank you and then please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Stay blessed.